Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant, hey. everybody watching us live. Jill was worried, she's like, people are not here, where are they at? Yeah. Where's them? I'm like, man, pe <laughs> people are busy, they, people show up, people show yeah. up, because we do this show live every Wednesday <laughs> at 3 p.m. live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast, and right out of the gate, I'm going to put something up. If you follow me on social media, you know that I've been working on Firewire Audio and Linux, like a compressed, like nice little five minute video. Like what works, what doesn't, how do you make it work, and what should you look for, what interfaces are good, and what like Firewire PC Express cards you should buy. And I got the rough draft together. I got that together and I'm going to click a button right now. So if you're in Discord, there it is, Firewire Audio on Linux Preview. I just posted that in our announcements thing, and uh, for patrons, that'll be up when I post the show. Take a look at it. Let me know what you think. I value your feedback, and if there's anything that needs to get changed or mixed around, let me know in the comments on Patreon, or just leave a comment in our Discord. Also, you've been thinking about getting a Firewire Audio interface? You're like, hmm, yeah, that's a really great deal. That makes a lot of sense. Especially since we talked about it, when was it, like two weeks ago, Joe? Mm-hmm, yeah. That we're going to be good for, like, guaranteed the next six years we're going to have that support in the kernel. And you're like, okay. I have my recommendations. And if you're in the States and you're going to be getting some off Reverb or eBay, the next couple of days for this video goes public is the time to get it. Because I've observed this effect. Anytime I do an interface that connects on a Firewire audio interface, because there's a limited supply of them. There might be six for sale at any given time, which is a lot. If you are just like looking for, it's like, Jill's like, oh yeah, I want one. Oh, look, there's six. I got six. That's a plenty of choice, right? Yeah. Not if there's seven people. Yeah, true. <laughs> six isn't a lot when you think about it. If the entire like available stock is six, it's great if you're the only person out like looking for one. And of course, more will show up in time. But, you know, we always want that like, oh, I want it right now. So that is your little bit of pro tip. Jill is uh, a year younger. Is Aww. that what people say? They go, yes, I, I'm a year that's younger. Nice, ben. Then you wake <laughs> up in the morning and you're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, gravity is ca catching up to us. <laughs> gravity always, so, gravity's like water. It always yeah. wins, man. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, I had a wonderful uh, birthday on Monday with my Steve husband at Disneyland. And I go there just about every year for my birthday. And I had a nice ride on on Space Mountain. It's actually called Hyperspace Mountain because of May the 4th be with you because of Star Wars Month. <laughs> so it's Hyperspace Mountain. And I even got this nice, uh, <laughs> this nice uh, travel mug that says Space Mountain. <laughs> it's really awesome. It's nice and tall and holds a lot of water, which is really good. And one of the gifts, one of the gifts that Steve hasn't got me was this cute pink plush <laughs> catacorn. It's so adorable. <laughs> I just love it. It's got a little rainbow mane <laughs> on it and a little rainbow horn. It's very cute. <laughs> yeah, he, he usually gets me penguins, but this time he decided me to get, get me a kitty cat. <laughs> So, so instead of uh, putting an, another penguin over in my collection over here that so many of our wonderful viewers and patrons got me, <laughs> he, he changed the subject and got me a kitty cat because I love them too. <laughs> Steve, if you ever get me a kitty cat, I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. You had a good time. Uh, Space Mountain was it too crowded? I uh, it nor it, it it was a two hour wait, but I got to get on there in twenty minutes. So did you get the pass? <laughs> yes, I I um, have a magic key. I have an annual pass holder, but also because it was my birthday, and and the cast member saw, oh, it's your birthday, and I got cut in line. <laughs> Which was got to cut in line, which was nice. Oh man, that's awesome to do on your birthday. I like being yeah. like, hey, people that have been here for hours, F you. Yeah. 
That's oh, always was, a good birthday awesome. present. <laughs> yeah. So, a couple of things to talk about this week. And I was kind of excited. We were talking about this in the pre-show. Go back and listen to that if you're a patron. But the URLs, it's, uh, it's an old-timey thing. You might notice if you use Chrome, it takes a minute. Before I click on something, I have a habit of like mousing over the link, and I instinctively go down to look at the URL bar to see where I'm going. You know, mm-hmm. what does this expand to? Yeah. <laughs> and that drove me crazy in the early days of Android. Now on Android, you can long press, and it'll yeah. pop up, and it'll say, hey, this is where it's going. And reading the URL, and I saw one that's like, oh, Mozilla Social. I'm like, ooh, Mozilla's doing their own social network fascinating and <laughs> well jill i think yeah. they're participating in a social network and, yes yeah. they are so yeah mozilla announced at the end of last year that they were getting ready to create a mastodon instance for the public yeah it's it's become all the rage of course since after the twitter fiascos but things have kind of mellowed out yet yeah, now but uh What's really cool is you can join a waitlist to get on Mozilla.social. And I joined the waitlist a few days ago, and I haven't heard back yet. And one, one of the reasons why Mozilla is doing this is they believe that the potential of the Fediverse is bigger and broader than Mastodon alone, but that this is a first step to a decentralized network away from corporate-controlled social media. And But personally, I am hoping Mozilla will, will eventually create their own app for Mastodon with hopefully easier discoverability and search. I mean, they could create an awesome app for Mastodon. That would, that would be awesome. And, you know, who knows? They m- may very well be, be thinking of that with the, wish l- the wait list in, in mind. But I think initially it's just to join their network. But they might create an app later. Who knows? It looks like they're they're thinking about the Fediverse more and more, which is awesome. That's kind of interesting. I was a little mm-hmm. depressed, though. I was a little depressed because I didn't read the entire thing, and I just saw Mozilla Social. I'm like, oh, what are they going to get up to? Like, oh, they're going to <laughs> yeah. I was like, we have one of those, mass.linuxgamecast.com. We sure do. <laughs> Thank you, Civic. I know mm-hmm. nothing about it other than I just like, sure. And, you know, we post... Um, Opening their own Mastodon instance to the public, that's kind of neat. They want to have like a very like tight lock and key, which is one of the fascinating things about Mastodon is, you know, it, it's more tuned to independent groups. And that's also one of the problems with Mastodon is getting everyone from their own little mm-hmm. silos connected, you know? Yeah. And they're like, we're, we're going to be like very like structured you know, because if you don't have rules, the worst of the worst always show up. And they, they make mm-hmm. it a point of that in this post. All this is going to be in our show notes, but you can apply. I didn't apply because we have our own Mastodon instance. I'm yeah, like, I know. I'm good. <laughs> I would, I would, I'm going to have to create another account if I want to join it. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I, I've been on Mastodon for quite some time. I, I understand how some of it works. Yeah. That's about where I, I think I fall in the vast majority of their, like, I get it. I think Mastodon's biggest problem is that everyone wanted Twitter, but not Twitter. Yeah, exactly. Right? They wanted yeah. Twitter without the bird on it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that, mm-hmm. I'm still waiting on my Blue Sky invite. If anybody nah. has one of those, speaking of, like, Twitter without Twitter, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for someone. There's opportunity right now for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, somebody's going to step in and fill that space. But, you know, I, I think like one of the really fascinating things that I found like very recently is, is seeing that some you would suspect, but other people that you wouldn't suspect have very unhealthy relationships with their social media platforms yeah you know like people it's a website no more mm-hmm. no less there'll be others we've watched them come we've watched them go, watch them go. We, we, like we've been Google around Plus. a long time right <laughs> like it's yeah. going to be the next thing it's going to be the next thing it's going to be the next thing yeah but then again some of us we got stuff to do <laughs> yeah like, I'm, I'm exactly gonna, yeah. <laughs> at some point you should grow out of being angry on the internet but 
Here's something to get angry about on the internet. Depreciated functionality. I saw yeah. this making the rounds earlier this week. To, oh no, Red Hat is going to get rid of X11. Kinda. It's, yeah. Kinda. Kind of. <laughs> this, this is the updated documentation, and uh, Xorg will not be included, in fact, in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10. However, it's going to be supported in RHEL 9 until 2032. Now, that's going to give companies and, you know, anybody running it almost a decade to make the switch. And it kind of proves my point. I've been saying Wayland's only 10 years away. Here we go. There it is. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember, though, uh, yeah. the X, X org server, that's what's going away. Not the ability to run your X11 applications via X Wayland. That's still going to be around. So don't panic. Mm -hmm. But you are going to yes. run into applications that have issues that don't are not quite optimized for Wayland quite yet, like OBS or ones that just straight don't work, like mm -hmm. Barrier. That's another problem. And, uh, you know, RHEL workstations, they're not uncommon. I was talking to my buddy last night. He's got a science lab. He's got a couple of workstations. I'm like, yo, what do you think about this? I just wanted to get his feedback for the show. And he, he's the one that brought up Barrier. And I'm like, I know that program. I run it. He's like, yeah, it doesn't work with Wayland. We're not going to mess with anything. And typically, like with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, they're not desktop workstations, that's back end stuff, but it, it does exist in academia, media production, and places like that. But do you think, Jill, mm. in 10 years, we'll finally have XFCE for Wayland? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's coming. They have actually talked about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the, the X Windows under X Wayland, they're, they're planning to make that work. <laughs> so with the with also my one of my favorite uh, window managers, uh, Window Maker. So they they've a lot of the developers have been talking about that. And you know, I actually wasn't surprised by this because you know I'm also a Fedora user where Wayland was already the default display server, and then you would have to exit out into the login menu to go back and switch to Xorg. So that's been around for a while, and a couple other distros have been doing that as well, including Ubuntu. And it's also, you know, as a Steam Deck user whose default is Wayland and Arch, you know, it, it's just right now uh, the distros are moving in that that direction, and it it makes sense. It it makes sense. I think it's gonna be a while for till everything, like Ven was saying, till everything is completely stable and works, all our software we like to use, but it's definitely coming. And something also interesting about the article um, is that Red Hat is also deprecating IP set and IPTables. IP NFT. tables, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was, that, that's, a, that's actually a really big deal. And as a replacement, uh, they say use the NFT command line tool provided by the NF tables. <laughs> so not IP tables, but NF tables package. So that's a big change for, you know, system admins. So in the world <laughs> using Red Hat. <laughs> All right. And there we go. Uh, so changes are coming. This is going to be Red Hat. And somebody asked, uh, I was following this earlier this week when it came out on a Reddit thread, and they're like, what about Debian? I'm like, man, Debian is not going to change off X for a much longer time. Debian, Debian is very stubborn in the philosophy of not broke, don't fix. Yeah. You know, but if you're doing you know, your standard desktop stuff, day in and day out, playing some games, browsing the web, Wayland's fine. Mm -hmm. It's not even a bad experience on NVIDIA at this point, uh, or AMD. Maybe if you bought the new Intel GPU, you might have some problems. Maybe not. Who knows? But, you know, really the only holdouts are going to run into like those edge cases. And it, it's the chicken before the cart, isn't it? Because we, yeah. we got to find out what all these edge cases are. How do you do that? You roll it out into production. You get people using it. You set it by default like Fedora's doing. Um, I'm going to avoid it like the plague until I can. <laughs> I am yeah. <laughs> not broke. Don't fix. And, you know, really, maybe I'm just waiting for X12, but mm. that's a joke. 
that's not yeah it, gonna it's not 12. gonna it's not gonna come yeah <laughs> i i kind of wish because i like the classic xorg and x11 but but wayland will it will be good it's just gonna take a lot of time mm. Mm. Yeah, so it's going to take another 20 years? <laughs> yeah, it's probably gonna, Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't know. Good luck. But the reason I wanted to bring that up in the show is don't panic. Like, mm -hmm. It's not going anywhere. And most people, most people don't even know. Yeah. I've run into that more than once. I'm like, oh, I was running Wayland. Like, yes. Unfortunately, that was, and that's why this isn't working. I'm like, yeah. oh, there we go. So good news, everybody. Everyone's favorite GPU manufacturer. Isn't that right, Linus? See, Linus, <laughs> Linus loves yeah. this company. Nothing but wholesome. Uh, they care about consumers and they want to give you the best values. And that, that's why they're going out of their way to show you how awesome they are. Of course, we're talking about NVIDIA. A little bit of a rumor. A little bit. A little lot of a rumor. The 4060 yeah. Ti. And this is on a lot of people's minds, especially if you're doing content creation. And we were joking about this in mm -hmm. the Linux Gamecast pre-show this week or maybe last week. But rumor has it the 4060 Ti is going to come in two flavors, 8 gigs and 16 gigs. And the 4060, the regular ordinary one, is going to be 8 gigs. But it's going to be on shelves in July. Now. That's first half of my production. Now, it was either me or Jordan that went on to carry this absurd thought was then they need to make a 4050 with 24 gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. Because we thought it was really funny if they were going to make a 4060 with 16 gigs of RAM. And <laughs> yeah. lo and behold, here it is. Here it's it is. It's a real thing. <laughs> and you got to ask yourself, you got to have that little bit of a thing. Would you pay $500? For a 4060 Ti 16 gig. Because I wouldn't. Mm -mm. And that's coming from somebody with a 3060. Not a 3060 Ti. Just a 3060. Because, like, right now, you know, I'm setting some pennies aside, you know, every month getting ready to build the Epic workstation for the studio. And one thing, not just me, but a lot of people in the audience, the GPU shortage, the dark times of the three years that taught us that we can all wait. We can all make do. And if you got a 3060 and you're doing 1080p gaming, granted, ironically, I don't have a lot of time for gaming. It'll do it in a lot of 1440p gaming. You're not, nobody's in a rush to upgrade, and you shouldn't be, because AMD said that they will be releasing new cards this quarter, the quarter that we're currently in, or at least announcing them, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. And you really should be keeping an eye out for those, uh, because AMD hasn't done anyone any favors with their gpu pricing either on the high end yeah nvidia has been astronomical and amd has been astronomical with aspirations 9.99 come on guys that's under a thousand dollars yeah <laughs> oh boy <laughs> jill will you be rushing out because apparently <laughs> nobody was rushing out to spend six hundred dollars on the 4070 yeah yeah i uh not too long ago, made the the plunge on an RX uh, 6900, 6950, actually, because it came way down in price. I was waiting for it. But something I'm actually really happy about, about this, uh, the new offerings from NVIDIA, is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti graphics card will come in various small form factors and compact ITX options, making them, you know, great for small builds. I, I have a lot of uh, small builds here in my studio, and I love having the, the low profile uh, and sometimes single so slot form factor of cards that take up a uh, little juice and work really well, <laughs> work really well in the old uh, Dell op Optiplexes. What's <laughs> wrong with your cards? My cards use electricity. Why do you have these? Yeah. <laughs> juice drinking cards. <laughs> juice. Well, what's really nice is it, they in the article it was talking about how these cards will even be uh, lower TDP, so um, they will only require only 150 to 600 watts while gaming, which is really good. And it said even maybe possibly even lower than that. 
Well, and that's this something is actually, we can say about the new architecture. It is very yeah, power efficient. Very, very power efficient. When they're reasonable cards. When they're reasonable cards. And it's supposed to be 25% lower um, energy consumption than its predecessor to 3060 Ti. So I was happy to hear that. <laughs> the, their, NVIDIA has done a really good job at, at bringing those numbers down, which is which really numbers? Because nice. the other numbers keep going up. Going up? <laughs> That's true. The, the TDP and the power supply requirements <laughs> are going down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 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 this uh, card also has uh, 32 megabytes of LT cache on board the GPU, which is actually an eight times increase over the GTX, uh, GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. So that's... That's really nice. But I noticed that in the regular, the just the regular NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti cards, it's going to be 24 megabytes, not 32. So that's that's the difference there for um, L2 cache. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, with how successful the middle of the line 60 series of cards have been in the past, like the popular you know, GTX 1060 that I used for quite a few years before I got a 1080. The 2060 and the 3060, it is actually, you know, really smart for NVIDIA to offer both memory off, uh, options, an 8 gigabyte version and a 16 gigabyte versions. And my thinking today, it's 2023. And by now, shouldn't the default be at least 12 gigabytes for all the models? I mean, come on, NVIDIA. Just saying. Not to think you should pay more for them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I get, you know, often uh, a lot more uh, RAM, a lot more uh, gigs of RAM on my uh, AMD cards than I do the, you know, comparisons with the uh, similar NVIDIA cards. So it, it makes 4K gaming better. <laughs> So. The yeah, <laughs> I ran out of video RAM two nights ago. Yeah, and DaVinci Resolve. I did. Yeah, you need that sixteen gigabytes. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do I need it? No, I don't. I don't because I know how to work around it. That's what I'm talking about. Learning about patience, finding what I like sixteen gigs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what I like twenty four. Yes. Could I use twenty uh four? -huh. Sometimes, most of the time, not really. Uh, 16 would be a nice spot. That was one of the reasons I was interested in the Intel Arc series, you know, shipping with 16 gigs for $350. I'm like, that is a very good value proposition. Unfortunately, they still haven't really figured out the Linux drivers for that thing yet, and much less getting support for compute and all that. They're very much with the AMD approach of like, you need to install this particular operating you know, version of Ubuntu made on, you know, the third Wednesday of this at after 4 p.m. And like, I don't even want to mess with that. And I don't even know if it works with DaVinci Resolve under Linux. So, uh, hmm. got to keep an eye on this. This is $100 yeah. more. The value proposition is if you could give me a 12 gig 4060 for 400 bucks, I'm not even interested in that. Yeah. I'm not. Because where's the big jump? Like, it's a, more performant than my 3060 by a bit mm -hmm. by a bit but the cool stuff that i want to play with that would make it worthwhile for you know people watching the show or stuff that i'm making for you know educational stuff uh, the things that i would spend the money on like there's the av1 encoding yeah. that's in beta on um youtube it's not available on twitch so i can't really leverage that in a buying decision the new nv encodes a little bit better but like is it do I need an entire card? No, the one we have right now in the 3060 is just fun. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I just got to go back to the um, interesting move. Don't, if you've been thinking about maybe you've just completely held off on the 30 series and maybe you have a 20 series, maybe you get a 2060. Wait until AMD. You know, if you get a 20, and yeah. you, if you're just mm -hmm. getting in it, getting something for gaming, maybe a little bit of streaming. You'd probably get away with the AMD card. Yeah, wait until AMD's announcement to see how all this plays down because AMD's got a really good opportunity because nobody yeah, is serving at, the at 400, lower $500. mid. And yeah. <laughs> nobody's doing the $300 video card. You used to be yeah. able to get a pretty decent video card for 300 bucks. I know. Not I so know. long ago. We're talking like six, seven years ago. 
you get a pretty decent video card. Yeah. Now that doesn't even service you well on the low end. So I'd like to see AMD take advantage of this. Intel tried to take advantage of this, but the Arc yeah. series. Maybe Battle Mage is going to be better. I want Battle Mage to be, get better. You know, <laughs> I never thought I'd be rooting for Intel in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But here we are. You know, that yeah. is this duopoly that we have with GPUs. It's not healthy because we've seen what it has led to. Mm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, if you want to help us uh, buy hundreds and thousands of <laughs> GPUs, you can do that. Head over to LinuxTeamCast.com. We got a support button. Become a patron. Buy a shirt, kick us some white stinky cash on the PayPal's. We got wish list. We got, uh, if you get, I hear Bitcoin's not worth anything, send that to me. I'll convert it to studio equipment. All the fun things. We appreciate your support. And um, as I said, being on the show, if you're a patron, you get access to our Discord. You get access to our show notes at certain levels. You get the Live and Uncut series, like this show. You're like, ah, oh, it's a pretty good show. Want an mm-hmm. extra hour of it? Because it usually takes about an hour and a half to record a 30 minute episode because that's how podcasts work, people. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, de- we're always talking, communicating. We put that in a podcast feed. We also have the video version of that available for you to watch later. Also, just on our live and uncut, because I'm not a huge fan of like permanently putting something behind a paywall. Those come out a week after for everybody else on the, I think it's just at LGC Uncut. Go to our main YouTube page if you can find that. And look in the uh, recommended channels. It's down at the bottom. We appreciate your support. We got a new patron this week, Jill. According yeah. to the Patreon thing, yeah, who and is I love it? the name. In it six. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's a awesome. fancy Inet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm more of an Inet three. I was gonna say I'm not Inet three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> Inet <laughs> Inet six. <laughs> Inet six. Thank you for your support. As always, yeah. come pop into our Discord where we're at the other six days a week. It's a fun place. And you can do that as well if you are a Twitch subscriber. Join me and Jill as we do Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for some puzzle platforming type stuff with the racing cards, good community we got going on there. And we do it at two different times, you know, maybe to work with your schedule a little bit better. 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays and uh, 7.30 p.m. on Fridays because it's late Friday night. Maybe you're not doing anything. Come say hi. We'd love to have you. Jordan is doing uh, Strange Brigades at yeah, 7.30 on Thursday. They had a wonderful, go watch the end of that video. Mm-hmm. They'd been stuck on a level. Um, they had a, a four-player multiplayer. They got a group going together, and they finally beat a level they'd been stuck on for like two weeks of just grinding and grinding and grinding. So it's always good when you see like that celebration. You know, I've been part of those a couple of times, and it feels really good. And that, mm-hmm. that was fun <laughs> to see them finally get through now jill wants to talk about an update (laughs) to a vintage piece of hardware retro hardware that you might have sitting around the house uh but it's always good when like your uh, retro hardware gets updates yeah so there is a new release of the debian based raspberry pi os available to download and it arrives with a new linux kernel 6.1 so, of course, this is for all of you out there who have Raspberry Pis. Uh, yes, Ben is right. Some of them are considered vintage because you can't get a hold of them now. <laughs> Older new ones are difficult to get a hold of. That makes them more valuable, Jill. Yeah, it makes them more valuable. <laughs> it does. The men are, this is why I laugh at you people. I lovingly, but I still laugh at you people. I was watching um, Pink Gorilla Games. They're a game store in Seattle. Oh, and they, yeah, they, yeah. they do vintage games and Cody was doing like a <laughs> shopping stream at the end of the day where he's, he'd bought a bunch of stuff and he's like, ah, I have this one copy of like some old game. Right. And one person goes, Oh yeah, yeah. I want it. I want it. I want it. And then he's like, Oh, and I have another one. They're like, Oh, I don't want it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, nah, Cause it's not, it's nah, not, not and valuable. Guy anymore. Faced, I was like, all right, I still love you guys, but that, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we're saying is, you know, if you're an old timer like us, you got a nice vintage Raspberry Pi, or if you're a big baller and can afford yeah. a two hundred dollar Raspberry Pi for oh more yeah, power to yeah. <laughs> I was I was happy the last Raspberry Pi I got was my Raspberry Pi four hundred, and I've been loving it ever since <laughs> because that's all I've been able to get ever since. <laughs> so, uh, but 
what it, what is nice is now yeah yes we have Linux kernel 6.1 available the older versions of Raspberry Pi OS used 5.15 LTS so it this is a really big jump and the newer kernel offers you know, improved hardware support new drivers performance boosts and you know better security and it also includes new gamepad support for the Hori Fighting Commander 1 and the 8-bit Do Pro 2 wired controller i know a lot a lot of people in our community use those controllers for gaming so that's ha, really I good to hear i remember the ssh login to the raspberry pi in the rack <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. I've been sitting here this entire time just brute forcing it. I'm like, oh, it's one of these. Oh, I never log into it because it just in. runs the Bitfoist <laughs> Companion uh, web server for the Dream Deck. And I'm like, I finally found it. Nice, Ben. <laughs> Not to interrupt, but there's my victory that's, celebration. Oh, that, that's, that's great. See, live in real time, Ben is doing it. <laughs> so, and uh, this, this update uh, for the Raspberry Pi OS also features. Updated software, of course, including Chromium uh, 113, Mathematic uh, 13.2.1, MATLAB 23.1.0, and the Raspberry Pi Imager 1.7.4. And there is also an updated VLC hardware acceleration patch, which should deliver better media playback. That's actually a really important one. And there's a new Raspberry Pi firmware updates to library camera, library camera apps, which I know Ven uses on the Raspberry Pi, and Pi Camera 2, which includes EXIF date and time tags. So a lot of huge uh, quality uh, improvements. And uh, all you got to do now is open the terminal and run sudo apt update and and sudo apt dist tack upgrade to upgrade the os or just download the latest iso and flash it on an sd card using the raspberry pi imager sd card easy. who uses an sd card with a raspberry I, pi? I know I, I i ssh and do it online so <laughs> to do updates <laughs> the uh well, i got an ssd in this raspberry pi mm-hmm. running over the running at the speed of usb3 why because it's a vintage piece of hardware it doesn't have yeah. an m.2 slot on it um, I just <laughs> check because I don't run uh, Raspberry Pi OS on uh, my oh, Raspberry okay. Pi. I run Companion Pi. Companion, cool. For the BitFocus Companion, it's already a kernel six point one. I'm like, all right, that's neat. Uh, no, I mean it's good, especially with the uh, eight bit do uh, wired controller. The yeah, all the fight, all that <laughs> stuff that just works out of the box because. Once these things are generally available again, like that was one of my favorite uses for watching people just making, like, no joke, like the retro gaming consoles and just setting that up to work out of the box with a Raspberry Pi and how easy that is, mm-hmm. you know, to set up your MAME stations and all of your uh, retro pies. So, retro arch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy to see it. All the good mm-hmm. updates. Still waiting for some new hardware from Raspberry Pi. I got faith in you. Bring it back. Prove me wrong. And uh, look forward to playing with it. But Absolutely. (laughs) We got to get out of here. Okay. Jill, it's been 34 minutes. It's been fun. We covered a lot of stuff. And we will (laughs) see you next week. Here's that. uh, Time to thank all our beautiful patrons. Here it comes. (laughs) Extra oons. Ooh, I like the music. I love the new music. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, that's bouncy and happy. It's as fun as our, our last uh, theme. <laughs> I don't know. This makes me want to go roller skating. Not oh, like rollerblading, yeah. roller skating. Thank you to our advisors. And that includes our Theron and our beautiful executive producers, our Chicago Kicks level, <laughs> our Sea Monsters, <laughs> and all the wonderful Death Notes. <laughs> and to all our wonderful chairlings. I had to remake these credits because I wasn't paying attention to the show number. And this is episode 374, but oh, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> my lizard brain, my lizard brain was looking at the uh, show notes for um, Linux Teamcast Weekly 560. Oh. Is what was open in the show notes tab. So okay. the lizard brain saw the number. So that was <laughs> the first set of credits I made when I came okay. in here. It was like, oh, right. That wrong episode. Sense. That's not, uh, that, that's not good. All right, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Love you all. Thank you for watching. 
Aw, thank you, Steve Husband. I'm just happy he got home in time to watch it. 